So welcome everyone. This is Jody King. I'm a PTAC contract specialist. I'm with, and we have with us today uh, Lois Lemus, who is going to talk about doing business with the state. Before I turn the mic and the screen over to Lois, I do just want to do a quick what's new in the world of PTAC. So uh, if you've taken any webinars from me before, you've already heard this information. But just to give you a heads up that as of October 1st, 2022, the PTAC grant realm moved from the Defense Logistics Agency over to the Department of Defense Office of Small Business Programs. And along with a new funding source comes a new branding process. And so our program is now the Apex Accelerators. Uh, and this is impacting all of the PTACs across the U.S., including the one in Puerto Rico and Guam, all 90 of us. And you'll see over this next year that uh, we are slowly switching our branding away from that Procurement Technical Assistance Center to the Apex Accelerators. What that means for our PTAC is our branding process will probably start when we start our next fiscal year uh, coming up on July 1st, and we'll start to see the changes on our website. What is remaining the same is absolutely everything else. We're still providing free assistance with all aspects of government contracting from cradle to grave at start to finish for federal, state, and local purchasing activities. We're still doing the free one-on-one -on -one appointments. Uh, we still have our free workshops. And of course, you know, like we're one of just others across the U.S. all going through this branding changeover. So for more information about our programs, we have the ptacalaska.org website. And we also have two other websites that you can check out now, our association website. I believe there's still discussions on how they're gonna rebrand our association site. And the reason I'm giving you that link is should you have offices in other locations, it's really worth checking out that site and finding the location and the websites for those other offices. So if you are thinking about expanding business into Hawaii, and of course, you know, being Alaskans, who of us isn't having that thought about this time of the year, but you feel free to click on either the APEC, the aptac-us.org or the Apex Accelerators, and both can provide you the contact information for a click on the state on the map, and you can see the contact and website information. Uh, it's great if you have offices. I encourage you to check out the other PTACs uh, across the other states because while we all focus on that federal contracting, each one of us is kind of an expert on what's going on in our own backyard. So that great example of talking about Hawaii, if you have questions about doing with business with the state of Hawaii, absolutely reach out to the Hawaii PTAC. But today, Today, we're going to be focusing on doing business with the state of Alaska. So at this point in time, I want to bring over our guest speaker, uh, Lois. Let me go ahead and I'm going to click make you presenter. So if you want to share your screen, and I'll let you introduce yourself. And of course, Lois, you're still muted. There we go, we see you're seeing. Okay, thank okay, you, the thank mic you. is all yours. Okay, thank you, Jody, very much. And thank you for inviting me to present for doing business with the state of Alaska. As Jody said, my name is Lois Lemus. I am with the Department of Admin, Office of Procurement and Property Management. I have been working with the state of Alaska for over 20 plus years. My career started with the Department of Transportation and currently now, as I stated, I am with the Department of Admin. So um, in between, I um, had worked with other departments and um, enjoy working with the state. So today, as I said, we're going to be going over how to do business with the state of Alaska. Um, and as Jody says, feel free to go ahead and put your questions in the chat. Well, public procurement in Alaska executive branch is governed 
by the following statutes and regulations. All procurements are performed in accordance with these Alaska statutes. These statutes and regulations are available for review with your legislature or even on the OPPM website. I did provide a link here. Um, so if you're not familiar where to go to, um, yes, you can always go to the Office of Procurement and Property Management, and we do have a link for our statutes, regulations, and AOMs. <clears throat> So when it comes to dealing with procurement, the Alaska statute AS3630, along with Alaska Admin Code 2 AAC12 and the Alaska Admin Manual 81 and 82 is what procurement in the state follow and provides our procurement code to um, govern. Along with doing business with following the state statutes, we also look at who should we be doing business with. Our three key departments um, are as following. We have the lease department. Um, they are with Department of Transportation and Facilities. The contracting department, which is um, overseed by Department of Transportation and Public Facilities, and then professional services, which are overseed by the Department of Admin. So when dealing with the leasing department, the leasing program is responsible for evaluating, negotiating, and procuring, and managing, and um, leases and contracts for space from the private sector and state property owners on behalf of the executive branch. Their mission is to provide cost-effective space for state agencies in a timely manner. Again, here's the website. So if you are looking at wanting to do business with leasing department that you have space available, you can go to the following website here. Next is Department of Transportation. <clears throat> Department of Transportation, they provide the con construction program, is responsible for most construction projects such as highways, airports, harbors, and public buildings. Along with leasing and construction, DOT POF is also responsible for the state equipment fleet purchases such as graders, fire trucks, and other vehicles. Also keep in mind that Department of Transportation, they may delegate um, construction procurement authority to other departments. So not only do you need to look at what um, Department of Transportation might have for their solicitation, but also keep in mind that there's other departments out there that have the delegation to do small construction projects. Next is the Department of Admin, Office of Procurement and Property Management. The Department of Administration and Office of Procurement and Property Management is responsible for the centralized purchasing of supplies and services for the executive branch of the state government. DOA may also delegate procurement authority to, to other departments. So again, keep in mind not only to checking the OPPM website, but also keep in mind with other departments. Again, I provided the OPPM website for you to download any materials needed or ask questions. So now that we talked about the key departments and statutes and regulations, it's also important to talk about the purchasing thresholds. We have small procurements and large procurement thresholds. When it comes to small purchases, we have three levels of competition for small procurements, depending on the dollar amount, including all renewals. 
when it comes to supply, services, and professional services with an estimated value of $1 all the way up to $100,000. You may be purchased by using price quotes or informal proposal solicitations with at least three responsible offers. The solicitation and award process could take days to weeks. So when it comes to purchasing anything under 10,000, the items of services value 10,000 or less may be purchased without competition. What that means is if the procurement officer believes pricing is reasonable, they can go ahead and purchase directly from a particular vendor. For instance, a $10,000 procurement may be conducted using reasonable and adequate procedures Will a procurement exceeding that 10,000 must be procured using the next higher level of competition. So what that means is the next higher level of competition is that 10,001 to 50,000 states here at least three firms or persons shall be contacted for quotes or informal proposal. The solicitation response may be either in writ written form of communication or verbally. So keep in mind, you might receive calls from departments asking you to provide a quote over the telephone. That's because they're using their small procurement process of 10,001 up to 50,000. Now, once we get up to that 50,001, to 100,000, which is that small procurement threshold. Again, they must contact at least three firms or persons, but they must also be putting this request in a quote or informal proposal. And this solicitation and response must be in writing and also be published on our online public notice. And this is where you guys can come in, um, look and see what the state is looking for that is considered a value above 50,001. Also keep note that when it comes to um, construction procurements for small procurement, their threshold is different from supplies and service. Their threshold is at that 200,000. So once we meet that small procurement threshold, everything over 100,000 is considered a large purchase, or we consider it also a formal procurement. When it comes to using a formal procurement, the method uses is like an invitation to bid or an ITB, or a request for proposal or RFP. These types are posted to the state of Alaska online public notice and are more complex and can take up to three to nine months just to complete. Now that you understand our threshold, we also want you to keep in mind, the first tip is follow the instructions. Make sure that you're reading the solicitation from cover to back. It's mostly about following instructions and filling out the forms correctly. Procurement laws doesn't allow us to allow bidders to make corrections after opening. And we are very happy to make um, help you with any questions that you might have. The other tip that we provide is ask questions. There's times during the solicitation that you can ask questions. One, if a pre-solicitation conference or pre-proposal conference, great time to go ahead and ask any questions that you might have. So it's very important if there's something that you're interested in, go ahead and attend it. Um, maybe you might have missed that pre-solicitation conference, then go ahead and reach out to the procurement officer or 
follow the steps. If they say you can submit questions via email or questions through their website, please do so. We rather have you ask questions um, prior to than not bid on the project at all. Our next tip is also make yourself you know, known. Um, we don't know who is out there, um, who's interested, what all the supplies that you have, or that you're willing to do business with the state. Um, so go ahead and market yourself. And if that's something that um, you're interested in doing, um, small procurements um, are posted on the online public's notice, so you can always go there and look um, and see what um, is, you know, being advertised and reach out to that department. Agencies need to know you exist in order to include you in contacting when a new solicitation or a current solicitation is on the street. Also, you may go to the following website here um, and you could find out who is the appropriate contracting officer in your section or in that department section um, to ask questions or find out what kind of solicitations are available. But again, if you don't want to do that, there is other ways to find out what type of jobs that we have available. I'm sorry, other solicitations that we have available. One way is the online public notice, and then the other one is the vendors self-serve, or the VSS. Let's go ahead and talk about the online public notice. When it comes to the online public notice, the following website, you can um, go directly to the, the online public notice page. You can find all formal solicitations or small solicitations that are from that 50,001 up to 100,000 on the online public notice. You can go to the online public notice listed on the website here on this slide, along with viewing the solicitations. You can also access the vendor self-serve porthole. And this is just a, a snippet of the how the front cover page will be. So going to the online public notice, you can use the search notice to search for active or archived solicitations. But also the other tabs tell you the most viewed ones, the most recent one, and upcoming events if there is any posted. So if you're not familiar with using the online public notice, you can go ahead and click on the search button. From there, it pulls the following website up or page up. Here, you can either declare it active or archived. You can type in a title. So if there's say, um, you just wanna look at what all ITBs are out there, you can just type in ITBs and click search and it will pull up a hundred different ITBs. Or if you want to get more specific, you know what department you want or um, a full title, then I strongly suggest you do that because it's a lot easier finding what you're looking for than just leaving it as an open random search. Along with the online public notice, as I stated, you also have the option to go ahead and use the vendor self-serve. What this does is give you two options. One, it does inform um, the departments that you are interested in doing business with the state, but also you can go ahead and pull up any um, solicitations that are being advertised. Again, with the self-serve or VSS, the following is you can go ahead and register or in the middle section here, view public solicitations. If you're looking at just trying to find a solicitation, again, 
the VSS does have a search area. My suggestion is to leave it open and then in your search word search, go ahead and say you're looking for a janitorial or snow plowing or sanding. I would put them direct words in here and then click on search. From there, it'll pull up any solicitations present and past. It also will pull up any um, when the project has been awarded, so it'll identify who the project has been awarded to. The other tip that I have and my last tip is preferences. Don't be shy when it comes to preferences. Understand what preferences are available. I always tell people that is doing business with the state, um, if you have a business license and a business within the state of Alaska, then you do qualify for at least one preference. So when it comes to preferences, you can go to the following website to pull up um, a pamphlet. And we did have that um, also guide with your hands out, handout today. Keep in mind that the state of Alaska has nine different preferences that may be claimed by vendors. So depending on what the project is can depend on how many preferences might be available. So when it comes to preferences, it applies as a percentage reduction of the bidder or offer's price for evaluation purposes only. But keep in mind, the contract will be awarded for the full amount of the bid or proposal, regardless of ever any preferences applied. Also, keep in mind that you must request or indicate on solicitation that you qualify for a preference. The procurement officer cannot just apply the preference without, even though that they know that you may qualify for it. Per our statutes and regulations, it's stated. So let's talk about our preferences. As I stated, pretty much anybody that is doing business in the state of Alaska has Alaska business license could qualify for the Alaska bidder's preference. The most common claim preference, as well as the preference that vendors must qualify before any other preference may be claimed, is that Alaska bidder's preference. This preference is worth 5% reduction of the bidder or offer's price for evaluation purposes only. To qualify for that preference, the vendor must, you must have the following criteria met. Also keep in mind, depending on, um, say you're not qualifying for an Alaska bidder's preference, then you don't need to go ahead and have your business license until before award. That's if somebody is, you know, um, out of state or that you have not yet signed up, but there was a project that you were looking at. So you can go ahead and get your business life afterwards, but because of um, the preference, if you want the preference added to your deduction, let's say, for um, evaluation, you must have a business license prior to. The next preference, this preference applies for um, informal request for proposals or formal request for proposals. And this is worth 10% of the total points available for the rating pro process. When I said rating process, this does not um, reflect your price. It is when they evaluate your proposal and provide a, a weight to it. But keep in mind, 
only if the proposal already is using a numerical rating system to it. And also keep in mind a vendor also qualifies for the Alaska offer preference if they claim and meet the requirements of the Alaska bidder's preference. Another preference um, that you may qualify for is the Alaska Veterans Preference. This preference is 5% or not to exceed 5,000 will be applied to the price. The bidder must qualify as an Alaska bidder and reside, reside in the state who served in one of the following services and con conditions that was not dishonorable. So keep in mind, also, along with the veteran's preference, um, the Alaska Department of Labor also has a certificate that you can um, fill out and present with your bid. But not only is you could reach out to the Department of Labor, but in some, not most, but in some solicitation, that documentation is also available for you to complete. Our next preference, and I always say this preference is utilized heavily with the Department of Labor because of when it comes to um, doing a road project, a lot of product, products fall under this preference. So if you're not familiar or if you are a vendor that has a product that falls under the conditions, I would think about looking at the Alaska Product Preference. The purpose of the Alaska Product Preference program is to increase the use of Alaska manufactured products in the state contracts. You can reach out to the Alaska Division of Economic Development. The, the applicable preference percentages are only applied to the qualified product itself. Costs such as transportation, postage, delivery, et cetera, are not to be included in the value of the product qualifying for that preferences. So how do you know if you have, uh, you're a manufacturer and you qualify to um, under the Alaska product preference? Alaska business, businesses that manufacture product with at least 25% value added in Alaska. You can register online by using My Alaska account. You, you only need to do this once every two years. But do you qualify? So Alaska products, more than 25% of value can be added by manufacturer product in the state. Produce or manufacture, process, develop, or make items into a new item with the distinct characteristics and used by applying materials, labor, skill, or other services in Alaska. And then lastly, the product, the material or supply does not include gravel or asphalt. So if you're interested, you can go to the following website here click on development, economic development, then Alaska product preference, and it comes to the Alaska online application. If you're just looking to see if a vendor qualifies for, again, the, um, they have a whole list of items that you could qualify for that falls under that Alaska product list. And for this purposes, let's just say I click on arts and crafts. From there, it pulls up a sub file that pulls up all of the criteria that falls under, um, say, print, printed products. And then um, say if I want to know what printed um, art prints, art cards, or so forth, or 
other items on this list, I could go ahead and click on that. From there, it pulls up a list of vendors that fall under that particular um, product. And let's say you are looking at having AT publishing as maybe a subcontractor. So you could go ahead and click on view. And from there, it pulls up their business license to make sure that it's um, active. But then on the next screen here, it also tells you what product they have and what class that it's that they're under. So um, say you are a general contractor looking at using AT printing as a subcontractor, you can provide say printing. It's a class three, so that's 7% that you would calculate off of that particular product. Again, keep in mind it's off of the product, not off of the total price. Again, um, the Department of Economic Development would be very happy if you have um, an interest in learning how to sign up or um, utilizing their website. So please reach out. The next of the preferences is we have recycling product preference. Um, the recycling product preference is 5% of the entire bid price. Again, in the evaluation of the bid or proposal for an agency procurement of pro products, the agency shall decrease the bid or proposal by 5%. Currently, for our recycling product, we only have paper products that are on our list. Again, Department of Admin keeps a list of all, all products that fall under that recycling product preference. Next, we have the employment program preference. In order to qualify for these preferences, the bidder must add value by actually performing, controlling, managing, and supervising these services provided, or the bidder must have sole supply of the general nature solicited to the other state agencies, governments, or the general public. Again, a bidder may not claim more than one of the disability-related preferences for the same bid. The other preference that would apply under this would be also the Alaska with disability preferences. This preference is worth 10% off of your overall bid price. Again, the Depart um, Division of Vocational Rehabilitation, they do keep a list of um, businesses and personnel that fall under this preference. So if you are a general contractor looking at utilizing this preference, you can reach out to the division and um, ask them for a list of participants. Our last preference that we're going to be talking about today is the local agricultural and fishery product preference. This preference is worth 7% off of your total bid price. Again, this relates to agricultural, dairy, timber, or timber related lumber products harvest in Alaska. So I just provided a sample here to give you an understanding of what preferences can do for, you know, Alaska bidders. So for the first one, like Minden Mill, they qualified for the Alaska bidders preference and the product preference, which is a class three. And as stated earlier, 
when it comes to the Alaska bidder's preference is off of the total bid price, but the product preference is only off of the product itself, not including the delivery and insulation. So when evaluating them two items, you would actually first use 45 and then 40 deducting where it gave a revised evaluation price of 39,950. While well, employment program cabinetry, they also um, qualified for the Alaska bidders preference, which is 5% off of the total bid price. The employment program, which is 15%, and then the local agricultural, which is 7%. Because of these preferences off of the total bid price, you would actually add up the percentage and then deduct that. So as for us, it was 27% off of the 50,000, giving a revised evaluation process of 36,500. Then um, Tundra cabinetry, they only claimed the Alaska bidder's preference, which was 5% off of that 40,000, giving them a revised total evaluation price of 38,000. Again, keep in mind the preferences are only for evaluation. In the end, the state of Alaska would be processing the payment for 50,000 or awarding the project for 50,000. Also, we'd be very happy if um, you're bidding on our projects and you're unsure about the preferences or if you think or if there is a preference that you know should be included in the solicitation and is not, please make the procurement officer or the contracting officer aware of it and then they will um, either A, amend the solicitation or they will respond back saying, this is the reason why it wasn't included in the solicitation. Well, this concludes um, my presentation. Again, if you have any questions or um, would like to know who to contact, you're always welcome to contact me at the following um, phone number or email address, or you can contact Jody. Thanks, Lois. Thank you. I was going to say, with great, I hand it over to Jody. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of great information. So, do we have any questions at this time about any of the processes, uh, the bidder's preference? Because I think it tends to be underutilized, especially for businesses, you know, entering and you know going after those state contracts uh, if they've not used them before. It paying attention, understanding it understanding how to apply it um, to give them that leverage over those competitors, especially the bidder's preference, because if you wind up with a lot of out-of-state bidders, uh, that really does then help average that to the favor to give that preference to that Alaska business. Let me pull up some contact information. Yeah, Jody, I was going to say I agree. A lot of times vendors don't utilize the preference because they feel like when they use the preference and it deducts their price from their bid, that's what the contract is actually going to be awarded at. So um, no, keep in mind, no, um, it's only for evaluation purposes. Um, and it does really make a difference as you've seen in that example. Absolutely, and so a lot of businesses too, if you're not familiar let me pull up the website here. Um, I kind of opened a few things. If you're not familiar with, uh, it's Alaska uh, Product Preference Program, how that's applied. There's some great information on the site itself of going through the application, but it also talks about which businesses are there. So if you're looking for that competitive edge, especially let's just use construction because that has the, the widest range for vendors. Uh, and even if you're not in that under that arena, we kind of understand that as an example. Uh, 
it, it gives you that opportunity to find those vendors that have gone through the application process and it, it's additional marketing. It's helping you uh, with the local state economy by taking advantage of these local vendors and then being able to apply their preference against for those line item details against your competitors. So I do have a couple questions that popped up, Lois. Let me pull this open so I can read it a little easier. So uh, Natalie wants to know, what is the difference between solicitations posted on Alaska online public notices and those posted on the VSS? Good question. So when it comes to our statutes and regulations, we must solicit anything that is over that, um, so that 50,000 to 100,000 small procurement threshold, but everything that is over that $100,000 threshold must be on the online public notice. Whereas the VSS, it is up to the departments um, if they choose to utilize or post it there. So it sounds so, like it is possible if it's under that 100,000, we could see it on one or both. If it's over that 100,000, then we absolutely, well, again, we could see it on both, but we absolutely will see it on that online public notice site. That is correct. So just to clarify and make sure I'm understanding, so we have the, um, here, and this is that, uh, the state of Alaska vendor self-service. And I just kind of clicked when Lois was talking about this, this view published solicitations. So this is kind of the option of the contracting officer if they want to post, if it's under that 100,000, they can post here or they could post both. There's that optional use of, is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. that so is for correct. us as Alaska businesses, we need to be a little bit more savvy about not at looking at both opportunities, both websites, not just the online public notices. That is correct, yep. And then we do have a second question from Rosita. She wants to know, is there a plan or a possibility of adding a woman-owned small business preference? Um, you know, I will have to research that and get back to you. Um, I don't have a response to that question. And this is where, you know, reaching out to our local uh, political leadership as well yeah. and yeah. proposing that and having that go through that legislative process of adding that. Um, so by all means, if you feel that the state of Alaska it's just a, a beneficial plan. You as that business owner, or you know, just as a resident of the state, reach out to those elected officials and get someone to champion that process as well. Yes, I agree. Do we have any other questions? Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Rosita. We've still got about 15 more minutes. If there's anything that you all would like us to go over. Let me just pull up a couple of the documents. I have them all staged. Uh, let's see. Well, I had some of them staged. So we have the application. Uh, preference. Let me pull up the how to do business with the state of Alaska and just pull that to your attention. Apparently, this new software the university is using for PDFs, this Foxit Pro, it's only going to let me have one document open at a time. All right, so let's talk about one of the attachments here, and it's really handy. It's this how to do business with the state of Alaska. So that has been in the attachments. It's also something that you can just do a a browser search and find it as well uh, and find the revised you can see it was revised February of 21 and it has a lot of the information that we were talking about today and it's a great referral 
document, if you want to go back and say, I just want to find that information. So you can see it mirrors some of the slides that Lois has created, but it also gives us a lot of that uh, just for reference. So it's only a 13 page document. Um, so feel free to download that again from your handouts. If you're wanting to do business with the state of Alaska, it is a great resource. Close that current tab. Also, we have the application for preference, this document application of preferences. I said that incorrectly. It is not an application, but it also goes over all the bit of preferences, how to apply and how to use that. So I'm gonna, how to apply it towards your bid to see if you're eligible to claim that preference. So another great document I would encourage you to download, uh, keep you know with your files when it comes to doing bids with the Alaska, you know, the state of Alaska and have that for that reference information. So a lot of great information and I wanna thank Lois for uh, pulling, getting all of these together so we could uh, share this information. And then the last document that we have is the two metrics. So we have the formal and small matrix. So again, it just kind of recaptures some of that applic the, how it supplies what the different thresholds uh, to give us that information of if, if this, then what. Talks about the award method. And again, great documents to kind of have at your fingertips until you really become comfortable and have built that experience in submitting bids with the state. And it also, if you do have difficulties downloading those documents, let me know, and I am more than happy to email those to you. So do we have any other questions? I do want to let you know how brave Lois has been. She, um, I reached out to the state. I actually had pulled open that how to do business and emailed Linda Polk and Thor View. Uh, that were listed on the covers. And I'm like, hey, I'm doing this webinar. Would somebody be willing to help? And uh, Linda, I'm not sure if she volunteered or was voluntold, but she's been fast, fantastic of uh, stepping up and presenting today on really a short notice uh, of getting this information. She really just only had a few weeks lead time uh, and was willing to work with our, our dates uh, to be able to present this to you today. So Lois, I truly appreciate you taking the time uh, of being here and providing this information on how to do business with the state of Alaska. You're very welcome and thank you for inviting us. It was a great pleasure and hope to be able to come back again. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things that when we close the webinar, there is an opportunity to fill out a survey. There's just eight questions. It should take you less than a minute. It's very quick, but one of the questions is, is there other topics that you would like to see uh, PTAC produce? And if you wanna see more specific training on responding to state of Alaska uh, and local, such as a munis municipality or the Matsu Borough or city of, of Palmer, for example, for what we call local contracting in our PTAC realm, uh, let us know, feel free to add those to that survey and uh, more than happy to look into that and extend our training benefits. So let me go ahead and pull up the next presentation that we have. Give me a moment here, everyone. Pull this up, here we go. It's already on the screen, you know, some days. So the next solicitation, or the next state of Alaska contracting specific training that we're doing is on February 23rd from uh, 10 a.m. to 12.30. And it's on deciphering a solicitation, state of Alaska requirements. So definitely the information that we had today is gonna be a great foundation for looking at and joining us for this particular uh, presentation. And I have the registration link here. Again, it's in that handouts, or you can just uh, see that on the ptacalaska.org website under training events. It'll give you that link to register. 
And last, uh, you have the email in the slide with Lois's contact information, but you're also welcome to reach out to PTAC. Uh, here's our staff for the Anchorage and Fairbanks office, and we're a statewide program. So if any of you are joining us outside of these two cities, don't feel that uh, you're not part of that representative pool, state of Alaska or statewide program. Let us know how we can help you. And again, if you have topics that you'd like to see presented, uh, or if you have questions that you think of after the fact, because that's usually what happens to me. I get all this information, I feel like I'm ready to move forward. Then we head out the door and you know, 12 things later, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a second, what was that website or what was that? Uh, how was I to go about that response? Again, feel free to reach out to Lois or myself or anyone within the PTAC staff and we're more than happy to help. We do have a few minutes left on the clock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call for final questions. So if anybody has one last thing they'd like to ask and give everyone a moment, And if not, well, we'll go ahead and close up early and let everybody have just a few more minutes to enjoy our winter wonderland outside. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. And again, Lois, I can't thank you much enough. I can't thank you enough. There we go. Let me say that correctly for joining and presenting today. Um, I greatly appreciate your time and effort in doing this. And thank you to the audience uh, for being here today. So at this point in time, I'm gonna go ahead and officially close the webinar.